Avoiding hard landings. Hard landings are caused by, well, landing hard. An increased rate of descent or stall on a landing surface that results in damage to an aircraft. Now, we did make up that definition, but that's only because the official one is even more vague. Stalling onto or flying into a runway or other intended landing area with abnormally high vertical speed. Sure, we've all had firm or bouncy landings, or tin, but a hard landing crosses the line into damaging the aircraft. In this video, we'll talk specifically about hard landings in fixed wing aircraft. Landing hard, especially repeatedly, can lead to firewall and engine mount damage, sheared rivets, compressed nose gear, wrinkled wings, broken skin, extensive structural damage, you get the picture. And that's why there's such expensive insurance claims. Hard landings don't just lead to expensive claims and unsightly damage either. They compromise the aircraft's integrity. So if you suspect that you've made a hard landing, have it checked out by your mechanic right away. There are two key components to a successful landing. Flaring at the right moment and with the right amount of energy. In today's discussion, we'll examine landings starting late in the approach. Come on. At this point in the flight, you should have already completed your pre-landing checklist. So let's assume your trim, flaps, and gear are all set appropriately for the conditions. On final, make small adjustments in your power and pitch, keeping your touchdown point in focus while avoiding fixation. Some find it useful to place a piece of tape or a dry erase mark on the windshield for added awareness for the touchdown sweet spot. We have a video on this technique if you'd like to learn more. A link is in the description. On average, it takes about five to seven seconds for an airplane to pass over the end of the runway for it to touch down. A lot happens in those seconds. If you're flying over the end of the runway, in most cases, the landing gear is 30 to 45 feet above the surface. But you won't use your landing gear to judge how high you are above the runway. In fact, in many aircraft, you can't even see all of your gear. Instead, you're gonna look straight down to the end of the runway while using peripheral vision to estimate your height above ground. Looking down the runway not only helps with your estimate, but it also helps with alignment. Basically, it stops you from overcorrecting. In this case, I'd say I'm about zero AGL. A runway's slope, length, and width all have a major effect on our perception of height above the ground. Night landings can be deceptive too. Add on weather factors like wind shear, tailwinds, and gusts, plus physiological factors like fatigue or even improper seat position, and flaring at the right time to avoid a hard landing just gets trickier. Even self-imposed pressure to land, for whatever reason, can lead to an unstable and improperly judged flare. If you're flaring too high, stop increasing the pitch, hold it, and as needed, increase the power to arrest the descent or else you'll drop like a brick. If the landing looks compromised, go around. Too fast, you'll float down the runway instead of landing on it. And don't force the nose down to plant the plane on the ground. You'll only increase your speed. So again, go around. Maybe you haven't landed at a particular airport in a while. Maybe it's sportier than you realized, whatever the reason. Here's an exercise to help hone your touchdown skills. All you need is an airplane, a willing CFI, and a long runway. We recommend doing this at a towered field so controllers can help keep an eye on traffic for you. Configure the aircraft for a soft field takeoff, apply enough power for elevator effectiveness, and to raise the nose wheel keeping in mind your goal is to taxi down the runway in flare attitude, not take off. This flare attitude will help ingrain the sight picture of a proper flare when you're coming in for a landing. Try this a couple times. Experiment with power and learn the sights and sensations of the right amount of power versus too much or too little. Go again until you feel comfortable with that sight picture. Then taxi back and take off. Or go home. It's been a long day.